What was done cannot be undone. But we can end the silence. We can stop turning our heads away. We can look at you in the eye and finally say on behalf of the American people, what the United States government did was shameful. And I am sorry. So what was so significant about this event that the president would apologize on behalf of the entire nation? Hi, I'm Jake Choi. And starting in the early 1900s, with syphilis rates sky high, the United States Public Health Service started a syphilis study on African American males. There were a group of servicemen who came back from World War I, and the, in 1932, the U.S. Public Health Service began to follow them. Um, they were diagnosed as having syphilis, and so for the next 40 years, the Public Health Service followed them and did not treat them and it's known as the Tuskegee experiment. It was uncovered in 1972 by uh, a scientist at the CDC who basically found out this was still going on and um, put a stop to it. And when my colleague and friend, Nelson Dorsey, and I found out about this event, we were both shocked. We hadn't learned about them in school, so we decided to go learn more for ourselves. We packed up our bags and supplies and boarded a plane from DCA to arrive in Tuskegee, Alabama. So, you might be wondering, what were Nelson and I hoping to learn from our trip to Alabama? Well, the United States Public Health Service syphilis study took place in Macon County, Alabama, which is where Tuskegee is located specifically targeting poor African-American sharecroppers with syphilis. However, besides the experiments, Alabama was also a major location of the broader civil rights movement. From the Selma to Montgomery March, to the Birmingham riots, Alabama was always at the center of things. What's going on, guys? I'm Nelson with Jake. We yep. have we've made it to Montgomery, Alabama. Tomorrow we are headed for Tuskegee University yes, and a are. pretty cool tour. And then really exciting, we're gonna actually have the opportunity to speak with uh, Dr. David Hodge, who is a bioethicist at Tuskegee University. So he's very knowledgeable on the subject. So we look forward to talking to him tomorrow. One of the first things that Dr. Hodge told us when we arrived at his office at the Bioethics Center, which is, by the way, where the experiments took place, was that we should not refer to them as the Tuskegee Syphilis Study or Experiments. If you say it's the Tuskegee Syphilis Study, and that's the way it's often said in the media, then the onus and uh, interrogation goes to Tuskegee. Instead, he told us to call it the following. The United States Public Health Service Syphilis Study at Tuskegee. As Dr. Hodge continued to talk, it became abundantly clear why the blame should be placed on the U.S. Public Health Service, not Tuskegee. I had heard that the scientists distributed false treatment in the form of an aspirin pill to African American patients, but there was something else that Nelson and I hadn't read about that truly shocked us. They set up a surveillance system all the way up to Michigan where the names of the 623 were on this list and you weren't supposed to treat them so you couldn't even go to another doctor when you leave Macon County. So it was a system of, it was at that part now, it is now not just malicious, but it is sadistic, it is um, evil, it's pernicious, it's wicked. Yeah because you are saying that you are actually trying to help them to stay sick. Ultimately, due to the clear ethical violations made by the United States Public Health Service, the study has created a deep-rooted mistrust in modern healthcare among the African American community. What happened at Tuskegee is only one of many examples of how African Americans have been exploited in healthcare. However, 
Dr. Hodge urges this community to not jeopardize themselves just because of this mistrust. But black women are justified in being cautious and skeptical about the trustworthiness of the medical doctor, the medical establishment. But that just means they should query it more, they should interrogate more, they should ask more questions, they should get second opinions, but that doesn't mean they should shut down their health care. Okay? Overall, our trip to Alabama was a success. In addition to Dr. Hodge, Nelson and I talked with individuals who gave us more information on the broader civil rights movement, such as Mr. Jake Williams, who told us about his firsthand experience during the Selma to Montgomery March, and Mr. Columbus Mitchell, who told us about his two uncles who were there on the infamous Bloody Sunday. With our investigation done in Alabama, we headed back to DC. But one question still remained. What is the impact of these experiments on modern healthcare? To answer this question, we decided to talk to Dr. Nicole Rochester, a health equity advocate, a TEDx speaker, and a founder and CEO of Your GPS Doc, a company dedicated to helping individuals navigate the healthcare system. Our discussion with Dr. Rochester was thought-provoking. The first question I asked her was whether she believed that the United States Public Health Syphilis Study impacted African-American distrust in healthcare. Admittedly, I expected her to say yes. However, she said something slightly different. I think that experiment, that's a part of the current mistrust, but there's, there's ongoing um, events that are happening every single day. And I think that that plays a much bigger role. So what are some of these ongoing events that Dr. Rochester refers to? Well, in modern healthcare, African-Americans are disproportionately disadvantaged, and there are many statistics to back this up. Maternal mortality rates are highest among African Americans in the United States, despite them being a minority. Similarly, during the COVID pandemic, African Americans were the most impacted group in terms of death. The list doesn't even end here, so these statistics go to show why there is such a sustained distrust in healthcare among the African American community. In addition to disproportionate treatment, Dr. Rochester cites a lack of meaningful connection between a doctor and a patient as a cause for distrust. There's not really a true connection anymore. Like everybody's typing on their, their computers and typing on their tablets and they're not even making eye contact with their patients. So I do think that that's a big element of the mistrust. To solve this broader issue of mistrust in healthcare, Dr. Rochester cites many solutions but it mainly boils down to one word, accountability. I think that there needs to be accountability, both at the level of the individual provider, but also like acknowledging that they're functioning in a broken system. There needs to be accountability for insurance companies and hospitals and health systems and pharmaceutical companies and all of the systems that have created this mess that we now have. The reason Nelson and I initially started this project about the U.S. Public Health Service syphilis study was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. During this period of time, the Tuskegee syphilis experiments were all over in the news, attempting to explain why African Americans weren't taking the vaccine. While I do recognize the importance of sharing what happened at Tuskegee in the news, I believe its portrayal has become a way of blaming historical events for modern distrust in healthcare rather than focusing on what can be done now. In reality, as Dr. Rochester points out, there are still issues persisting today that cause this continued mistrust. The historical error made at Tuskegee should be something that we learn from, a reminder to keep fighting for health equity.